Okay, good morning. So we'll start with meditation. Bringing your focus back into your body. Allow the body to settle into the posture and ground into the posture. Starting at the crown of your head, release any tension of your scalp and around your hairline. Imagine the relaxation you would feel if water were poured over you that was exactly the right temperature. Maybe the feeling you had in the shower just now Relaxation settling all the way down your body. Encourage your back and your spine into straightness and strength. Invite the front of your body to release and relax, not to hold or to clench. And if it helps, you can take a few deep, intentional breaths, filling the lungs completely, emptying the lungs completely. Breathing all the way down into your belly. and all the way out. And now we'll revive our motivation. All sentient beings, although self and all appearances, 
our Dharma Datu by nature, have not realized it thus. I shall endow with happiness and the causes of happiness. Allow your mind to connect with love. I shall separate from suffering and the causes of suffering. Allow your mind to reconnect with compassion. I shall make inseparable from happiness without suffering. Connect with joy, empathic joy and rejoicing joy. Wishing sentient beings the stable, sustainable happiness that comes from real transformation. And I shall set in equanimity the cause of well being, free from attachment, aversion, and partiality. Let your mind deeply connect with that immeasurable equanimity. Whether we project a label of friend, of enemy, or of stranger, or anything in between. May the heart be open with unbiased, impartial goodwill. Thinking may you all be happy. And may you all create the causes for happiness. Beneficial, constructive, positive actions of body, speech and mind. Empathic and altruistic. And whether friend, enemy, or stranger, may you all be free from your suffering and the causes of your suffering, the destructive actions of body, speech, and mind, those self-centered attitudes driven by self-cherishing and self-grasping. May all sentient beings be free from these, no matter how I class them or label them myself. And in order to enact the greatest benefit, the greatest progress and transformation for ourselves and all sentient beings, one of the essential skills is focus, single-pointed concentration. A 
And so we bring our focus single pointedly to the breath and allow our attention to settle there. And if your mind is tempted to go back into sleep or tempted to anticipate all sorts of plans, just very gently remind yourself that a good meditation is not one where there is no distractions, but one where you choose not to fall into them and follow them. A good meditation is choosing not to indulge them. Gently, decisively, come back to the breath.
can shift from focusing on the breath to a non-reactive watchfulness over your own thoughts. Watching the thoughts without push or pull. without suppression or indulgence. Not agreeing or disagreeing with any of them. Just watch.
not fallen into the thoughts and their contents, not disassociated from them in a fog, just watching. And now we'll explore some related ideas from Pema Chodron, who invites us to regard all dharmas, all phenomena as dreams, as is mentioned in Geshe Chekawa's seven point mind training. She says, Another Lojong slogan that I like to work with when teaching meditation is, regard all dharmas as dreams. This is basically saying, regard all thoughts as being the same as a dream. This is considered a meditation instruction. It points out that as we sit in meditation, we could begin to realize that we create everything, all our thoughts with our mind. They are not solid. They are not something tangible that we can grasp onto. They are concepts, interpretations made from our conditioning. In other words, whether we are thinking about a beach in Barbados or a lover or our spouse or what to eat for lunch, it might feel very real, but Barbados isn't in front of you and lunch isn't happening until later. So again, when we realize that this process is going on, we acknowledge it by just calling it thinking. When we say thinking, it's as if we're acknowledging that all our thoughts are like an illusion or like a dream. The illusions that we create with our mind while we're sitting in meditations Illusions that we call thought can create fear, joy, sadness, wonder, anger, the whole gamut of emotions. Thoughts can cause us to cry. 
that can cause us to smile. Many thoughts have a lot of emotional content. In our everyday lives, we are run around by these thoughts that we make so solid with our mind and our thinking. So when we say, regard it all as a dream, we lead ourselves towards something that many people have discovered throughout the ages about the nature of reality. It's not as solid as we think. coming to terms with the intangibility of our thoughts, with their lack of reality, can liberate us from enormous suffering and anguish. A thought or a fear can develop into a full-blown storyline that can cause us incredible pain and upset. This tendency has the potential to destroy the quality of our life and our ability to connect with others. Our thoughts often escalate and meditation helps us learn to de-escalate suffering. We make a huge deal out of our thoughts, but just like dreams, they have no real substance. They are like bubbles or like clouds. So when you realize you've been thinking, you can just touch the thought and let it disappear dissolve back into the vast blue sky. You're not shooting down the thoughts like clay pigeons. You're not cutting through the thoughts with a sword or smashing the thoughts over the head with a hammer. There's really nothing there to fight. You just let thoughts dissolve back into the vast blue sky, like touching a bubble with a feather. So with those thoughts from Venerable Pema Chodron in mind, come back to your observation of thoughts. And this time, even more than just mere observation, gently go into disillusion. Not fixating on them in any way. They can be touched and let go of. They can be seen and then dissolve. like a wave arising in water and returning back to the smooth of the sea.
It can help to think that you're watching for gaps, even though there are no gaps in mental factors. The five omnipresent mental factors are always there. But if you can focus on the sense or the impression of gaps or space, it can bring you closer to this bare awareness. Not nothingness, more like reflexivity. Be with that reflectivity of your mind.
and shift back to awareness of thoughts, noticing their content a little bit more, still non-reactive, but allow the focus to become in a way a bit more coarse once again. Noticing things like anticipation or reminiscing. And briefly coming back to the breath, the breath and the body. The physicality. Regrounding yourself. and dedicate. Jan chu sam chu rim po she ma ke pa nam ke gyu chi ye pa nyam pa me pa yi go ne go ndu pa wa sho to ni da wa rim po she ma ke pa nam ke gyu chi Ke pa nyam pa me pa hi, kon he gon du pelwan sho. May bodhicitta and emptiness take root and develop for the benefit of all sentient beings. And you can relax your attention. Okay, good night, good morning, and uh, see you in a bit. <laughs>